So in numerical methods, we started looking at computer arithmetics, random number generation, uh, and the Monte Carlo method. And I like to conclude a little bit or finish the section on the Monte Carlo method, but we will use the Monte Carlo method uh, again and again to actually explore um, some properties of uh, mathematical models. And the next session is on uh, time discretization of stochastic processes. So, to finish this section on the Monte Carlo method, I would like to talk a little bit about the Monte Carlo simulation. Yeah? So, actually, we learned Monte Carlo integration, calculating the expectation of uh, stochastic processes. Um, even before we start uh, going into the details and uh, define uh, how we discretize a stochastic process. Uh, because we already know a stochastic process uh, which we can construct, maybe the Black Scholes model is a good example. And, <clears throat> well, I often uh, started with this motivation that in mathematical finance you like to calculate uh, the value of a derivative. Uh, so this uh, function b of t here is the value of a financial derivative of a financial product at a given point in time. And given that you know the value at a future point in time, so how can we know the value at a future point in time? Because it is a payoff function of some other property. And this other property, for example, the value of a stock is modeled as a random variable. So for example, here the V of T is just um, some uh, function of a stock S and S is a given random variable. So you have a model which describes the distribution uh, of S. Then this problem is a one-dimensional uh, integration problem. Huh? So S is a random variable which has um, uh, a value in R, the value of the stock. So this looks like looks like a one D one-dimensional integration. So we can use Monte Carlo. Uh, say, assuming the n, the numeraire, yeah, which is the reference asset, uh, is um, deterministic. If you know the method that you can change the numeraire and choose the corresponding equivalent martingale measure, then you can make actually n of capital T becoming deterministic because you just used the zero copper bond, which is equal to one in capital T. But this is a detail. No? So assuming. n of t deterministic. Okay, so and for one dimensional um, Monte Carlo integrations, maybe we could use uh, low discrepancy sequences. Everything is uh, nice. Uh, but the point which I like to uh, shortly uh, bring here is that actually even this can be a very high dimensional, 100 dimensional integration problem. And there are two possible aspects that can make this um, a high dimensional problem. The first one is your financial product already has a very rich uh, dependency structure. For example, if you look at uh, an Asian option, so an Asian option uh, does not pay you uh, the maximum of the stock at a future point in time, minus k and zero, it pays you the maximum of the average value. So some time averaging, looks like a Monte Carlo integral, <laughs> some time averaging uh, of the stock. Yeah? So you look at the past values of the stock and you perform some averaging. So here your payoff function V of t, yeah, uh, is a function of actually a random vector x. 
and this random vector x so is a function of x and x is an n-dimensional random vector. Okay, and you see if you have uh, an average over, for example, every month in, in the last year, yeah, you already have a 12-dimensional integral if you like to calculate the expectation of this random variable. Yeah, because you now, if you use Monte Carlo, you have to draw uh, random drawings of this vector. Yeah? So actually I have to draw n random numbers for one sample of this vector. So that's the first aspect. Your financial product can be high dimensional. So actually what you just saw is already a kind of stochastic process. Yeah, because here this random vector uh, as one uh, as of t1 as of t2 and so on is uh, the stock at different times so you have a function which maps time to a random variable or say i have a function mapping the index i to uh, the random variable so i have a time discrete stochastic process so just as a small reminder, stochastic process is just a time parameterized family of random variables. So it's a family of random variables parameterized by time. Okay, so I use then the term Monte Carlo simulation uh, instead of sometimes Monte Carlo sampling if this vector yeah, is actually uh, different points in time. That's just uh, uh, a different word. Okay, so Monte Carlo simulation of stochastic processes is inherently high dimensional. So if you need to simulate all the random variables S of T1 to S of Tn, you immediately have an n-dimensional integration of this random vector. However, even if you have just the European option, which depends on just the last value, yeah, then this can be a very high dimensional integral. So this is now the second aspect. Yeah? So consider uh, my first example of a European option. So there the payoff function was just a function of, say if you have a call option, S of capital T minus K and zero. Yeah. And you consider the expectations, say, of Vt divided by Nt, yeah. Or if you write it with n of little t inside, it's Vt multiplied with the numerator ratio, the deflator, and little t Nt, so conditional Ft. Okay, so expect, just the expectation of Vt, yeah, so multiplied maybe with some deterministic function in the special, special case where Nt and capital T is deterministic. So this looks like a one dimensional integral, yeah, looks one dimensional. But the question is, How do you get your model as t? 
Okay, so it may be that in order to construct this random variable, you already have some procedure which involves some high dimensional random vector. So let me uh, illustrate this uh, with the Black Scholes model. So actually, for the Black Scholes model, uh, you know that the stochastic process, so the Black Scholes model, let me uh, just uh, uh, copy this here. So the Black Scholes model states that the change of the stock, yeah, the infinitesimal change of the stock, is proportional to the current value of the stock times the time change. Yeah, so it's an exponential growth. Yeah, uh, plus the same. Yeah, so some proportional change multiplied with a Brownian increment. Yeah, so in discrete time steps, this is just a normal distributed increment. And you know that it's easy using Ito's lemma to derive the exact solution. So giving, given uh, a starting value S of Ti, you ac know explicitly the next value S at the next time step Ti plus one. It's the uh, exponential of um, Oh, I wrote uh, R, so let's write mu here. So let's write mu. The coefficient here has got mu. The exponential of mu minus one half sigma squared times time step size plus sigma the square root of the time step size multiplied with zi, where zi is um, a normal distributed random variable, and the zi's are independent. Uh, so for a time step, you have that the next value is a function of the previous value and a normal distributed random variable. Okay, so luckily you can use this now for arbitrary time steps, t0 and tn. So you explicitly know the step from say t0 to tn. So you know how to construct the last value. And this last value is then just a function of a single normal distributed random variable. So maybe we can have a small code session at a later time where we do Monte Carlo sampling um, in the Black Scholes model or for sure you already have some exercises in this direction. Um, and you have a one dimensional integral. But now assume that actually we do not know how to make the step from zero to Tn and we have to approximate this by doing small time steps. So maybe just assume that I'm forced to use this rule here to construct um, the S at Tn. So then you see that the vector of values ST1 to STn is a function of the random vector z0 to zn minus one, your normal distributed uh, increments. And you also see that the last point, stn, is a function of this vector. So it can happen that your model, which constructs stn at the final time, uh, is such that this um, random variable, so this one dimensional random variable, is actually inside your model a function of an n dimensional random vector. And in that case, uh, we already have that even for a European option, yeah, so even for a European option, the, uh, the um, evaluation could correspond to an n dimensional integral. Namely, it is a function of the n-dimensional random vector z0 to zn minus 1. So you know how to generate this vector z0 to zn minus 1. It's a vector of normal distributed random variables. Yeah? So you just draw n uniform random numbers. 
you invert the distribution function to generate normal distributed random numbers. And you have the n vector of normal distributed um, random numbers. So you can perform the Monte Carlo integration in this high dimension without a problem, but you immediately see that uh, in order to construct the S of T using this recursion formula, you have an n dimensional problem. So, and how large is n? So, n is just the number of time steps. Uh, so, n is just the number of time steps. So this means if you take um, 100 time steps, for example, you like to be very fine, yeah, have uh, every three days in a year a new, uh, a new value, uh, then you have a 100 dimensional uh, stochastic integral, Monte Carlo integral. Though that's why you see that in our session on Monte Carlo simulation, it was important yeah, to stress that uh, Monte Carlo approximation is very suitable for high dimensional integral, integrals. And uh, in our discussions, we had results that, for example, in uh, say eight dimensions, yeah, Monte Carlo is better than the Simpsons rule. Yeah? I, I don't know, was it eight? Yeah? or after eight dimensions. Or if you compare Monte Carlo to quasi, if you co compare pseudo random number generators to quasi random number generators, depending on the number of passes. Uh, so for example, it was maybe 10 million or something like that. Uh, after four dimensions, a pseudo random number generator can be better, yeah? perform better uh, with respect to the convergence rate. So, these were numbers like eight or four. Yeah? And here you see you are very easily in the situation that you have a 100 dimensional integral. Just because time steps in stochastic processes correspond to dimensions in the Monte Carlo integral. So this is the important uh, message yeah? I like to tell you. The number of time steps in the discretization of a stochastic process relates to the dimension of the Monte Carlo integral. Okay, so in the script you have some more examples on uh, Monte Carlo simulation of stochastic processes. I have a Poisson process here and I have a remark on low discrepancy sequences which I like to skip and start with this section. Okay, so that's a new chapter. Um, so let's talk about a time discretization, the time discretization of stochastic processes. So what I like to do with you in this uh, section is uh, we discuss some different possibilities of discretizing stochastic differential equations the Euler scheme, the Milstein scheme, the predictor-corrector uh, scheme, yeah, or correction. Um, and for the Euler scheme, I will also uh, prove the convergence rate so that we have a weak order convergence one divided by n. n is the number of time steps now, yeah, not the number of paths. And um, strong order convergence one divided by square root of n. And then we will uh, shortly note that actually the weak order is the one which is important for us. Uh, for this proof, I need some results from uh, say uh, mathematical finance, which you have very likely in other lectures. Uh, I will shortly uh, review these results and distribute them uh, uh, in the script. Before I start, this uh, say more uh, technical discussion. Yeah, I would just review two or three different uh, methods to discretize a stochastic process and give you some intuition. And actually, what we do here yeah, can already serve as a definition of a stochastic process if you are lacking maybe a little bit the mathematical background, because um, 
the discretization scheme is in the end what is important to us. We will implement these things in the computer and whenever you implement something in the computer, at some point there is some kind of discretization because the computer works here with, uh, for example, the floating point numbers works already with a discretization. Um, so actually the discretization is uh, our, in the, uh, often in the modeling is our starting point. Okay, so that's maybe a small remark, yeah, to just give you an overview of the sec uh, section here. And um, yeah, let's recall a stochastic process. So a stochastic process dx, let's consider ETO processes in this section. So we have some function mu dt plus some function sigma. So mu, I call mu the drift because it is the coefficient in front of the time step. Yeah? It tells me how the expectation changes uh, over time. And I call sigma dw the diffusion, yeah, because it will create random changes, and so it diffuses the value. So actually, this here is how we write an ETO process. Note that this is just a short notation. for what you get if you apply the integral. So integral dx, so integral dx, say from ti to ti plus one. So this is just the value of x at the end minus the value of x at the starting point. Yeah. So, X is now a stochastic process. So it is a family of random variables parameterized by time. So I call this family X of T. No? So it's the map t, t maps to x of t. x of t is a random variable. All these random variables are over the same space. Hmm. Yeah, so it's not that you have in your omega uh, a different omega for every t. Yeah, it's over the same space. So if you select an omega, then you can observe x at different times. So this is x of t1 omega. I can observe it here. Then I can observe it here. So this is x t2 of omega. So, and in between, it also has some values and all these guys are random variables. Actually, it's not clear that the next random variables at the next infinitesimal time point starts at the previous value. It could have a different value. So in that case, we have a jump. Yeah. So here I don't have a jump. I just draw it here. Continuous, yeah, but it's random. Okay, and that's one omega and a different omega is maybe uh, a different realization of the random variables at these values. So I call this a different path. So omega, is then in our context sometimes called a path. So now I mentioned that 
this specification, this is how we specify the stochastic process. It's just a short notation. Yeah, so I assume you remember this. If you apply the integral on both sides, so on the left-hand side, the integral dx is just x at a later value minus a previous value. And this here is just integrate a function mu over time. Well, the function mu is uh, the function that is integrated here is a random variable itself. Even if mu here is a deterministic function, mu depends on the random variable. So this is a random variable. So I integrate a random variable over time, but you can inter interpret it as integrating path by path. So for every omega, this is just the integral over time. And then we have the stochastic integral, integral this, with respect to the Brownian motion. So this here is the Brownian motion. So this is the Brownian increment. Yeah, so W is a Brownian motion. So this means Delta W, yeah, so which is say of Ti, which is W of Ti plus one minus W of Ti is normally distributed. So that's more or less the definition with mean zero and standard deviation. square root of delta ti, so the time step size. Okay, so this Brownian motion is already a building or already a stochastic process. And what I've written here in blue is more or less the definition. You might uh, wonder, okay, why is there a special standard deviation here? But you know, if it is normal distributed and every delta w is independent, uh, the sum of two independent normal distributed random variables has a variance, which is the sum of the variance of the individual summons. So if you have different time steps, every time step should be normal distributed. So if you have uh, the time step from Ti to Ti plus one, and every such increment delta W should be normal distributed. And also the increment over two time steps should be normal distributed. Then you immediately have that the variance over two time steps is the sum of the variance over the individual time steps. So you see that the variance grows linear in time, hence the standard deviation is a function of the square root of time. Okay, so um, maybe I can have a different session or I record you something and upload it, uh, this, uh, on here the construction of the stochastic integral, but actually the stochastic integral with the Brownian uh, motion is constructed like uh, you construct uh, the Lebesgue integral. Yeah? So for the Lebesgue integral, there were um, elementary functions, piecewise constant functions, um, which um, approximate the integral. And here is actually the same. So you can think of this as being approximated by piecewise constant functions. So for example, if this sigma here of x of t would be a constant, then you see that this is just a constant multiplied with the integral of dw. So just a constant multiplied with a normal distributed random variable. So you see that this is actually a rule of constructing the next value so I move this to the other side. Yeah. So you can remove here this and write a plus here. So write a plus here. And here we write an equal sign. So we move this to the other side. So then you see this is actually a rule of constructing the next value from the previous value um, by uh, 
Okay, that has to go. So maybe I write this a little bit nicer. So that this means the next value is the previous value plus two integrals. One integral is a function uh, of time, which may be uh, a random variable. So I do it path by pass, integrated over time. And the other integral is the stochastic integral. So if sigma would be a constant, it's just add the constant multiplied with um, a normal distributed random variable. Okay, so that was a small uh, recap of uh, stochastic processes, uh, the definition. And I like to uh, review a few discretization schemes of these stochastic processes. So now we talk about discretization of time. Yeah? And the first one, which I like to review is the Euler scheme. So in this section, I only look at ETO processes. So given an ETO process, and I use here always the short notation. So dx is mu of t and x of t dt plus sigma of t and x of t dw. Yeah. So you see, this is like if you maybe just take a look at the green part here. Uh, so what is the green part? So that part. This looks just like an ODE, yeah? just like an ordinary differential equation. If you would like to solve it, you, know, you have x prime is mu of t x of t. Yeah? So try to find uh, the solution. For example, if you just have dx is say rx dt. Yeah? So that means that dx by dt is r. So that means that x of t is x of zero exponential rt. So e to the power rt. Yeah? So that would be now our uh, solution. Yeah? So if you would like to write it then in the notation I had before. Yeah? So x at an earlier point is x at, uh, x at a later point is x at an earlier point plus x zero times uh, e to the, so let's write this here, x zero times ERT minus one. Okay, so um, a way of performing this integration, so if you look back here, we have to calculate two integrals. A very easy way of calculating this integration is to approximate the integrand by a constant. Because if this integrand here is a constant, you can move this constant before the integral and you see that integral dt is just the time step size. And the same here, if this is a constant, you move it in front of the constant and integral dw is just the delta w, so the Brownian increment. Okay, so if these two coefficients were just constants, then uh, it would be easy to calculate the integral. So, and which constant do we take? We just take the value of the coefficient at the starting point of the um, interval. So this means that, uh, this part here 
is approximated by mu evaluated at the starting point ti times time step size. And this part here also with the, the tw yeah, is approximated. So the coefficient is approximated by sigma at the starting point, which is a constant. And then I move the constant before the integral and I have just the integral over dw, which is the delta w. Okay. Well, you see that actually here, the coefficient mu depends on the x. Okay. So actually it's not a constant in the classical sense. Yeah, it's not the real number. This mu at the starting point is a random variable. But given that we already arrived at the starting point, we know this random variable. Okay, so that's not true, yeah? So if we would know the random variable, then we would have some method to actually solve the SDE. So what we actually know is the approximation. So actually there's a second step in our approximation of the um, integration. We approximate mu by a constant, namely the constant that we get if we take t equal to ti, and if we take x equal to the approximation our Euler scheme created in the previous step. So what we do is we replace this recursion here We replace this recursion by a recursion using mu of ti. And so using ti instead of the little t and using the x created by the recursion. So x tilde, I call it here, um, replacing the x by the x tilde created by the excursion. So the Euler scheme is then defined by uh, this rule. So the Euler scheme is the next value is the previous value plus mu evaluated at the previous point in time. So ti using the previous value we created and uh, times delta ti plus sigma also using the previous point in ti. So the point, point ti and the previous value we created. So x tilde ti. Yeah? So this is now our new recursion formula. Okay. And where do we start? Yeah? The initial value for the two stochastic processes is the same. Yeah? So if this, oops, sorry. So if this stochastic process here starts in zero and we have some initial value, say x subscript zero, then also this one should start at the same initial value. So x tilde, uh, sorry, x tilde of zero is the same initial value. Say initial value is called x zero. Okay, so that's the Euler scheme. Very intuitive idea, yeah? so remark, so our intuition. This corresponds to uh, the following integration rule. So if you have to integrate, say, just uh, a function, yeah, so forget about random variables. If you just have to integrate a function dt, yeah, 
f of g dt, then you approximate this at f at a fixed value and I choose the starting point, so the left point of my integral interval. Yeah, so then this is a constant, so, so then this is f of ti times uh, delta t, yeah, so delta ti. So this is, you have to integrate, uh, say for example, this uh, function here, yeah, and this is ti, then you just choose this point, take it constant, and if this here is ti plus one, this is your approximation of the integral here. Okay. Only little special thing is that our function is a stochastic process. So we do it pass by pass. And since the X appears inside this function, we also have to plug in an approximation of the X and the approximation of the X is the result of the previous Euler step. Okay. So summary, uh, if you know that the exact solution is uh, for the uh, stochastic process is this, yeah, the value at ti plus one is the value at ti plus the two integrals, uh, the dt, the drift part and the diffusion part. Then the Euler scheme approximates this integral by using here two constant coefficients. So this is the corresponding um, approximation for a single Euler step. But now if we do successive Euler steps, then there is some ad one additional part here that this guy is replaced by the result of the previous Euler step. So in successive Euler steps, use the Euler approximation, yeah? So use the X tilde, use the X tilde of Ti in place of the X of Ti, yeah? because you do not know the true solution. Okay. Very easy. And it's actually, in many cases, this scheme is sufficient. Uh, we will later look at some tricks where we use Ito's lemma to transform the, um, the variable of the stochastic process. And uh, sometimes combining Euler scheme with, with an Ito's lemma transformation to a nice um, coordinate yeah, gives you a very accurate scheme. And maybe one, one other remark. Yeah? So this is a time continuous stochastic process. So time can be infinite, time steps can be infinitesimal small, but in mathematical models, actually we do not have so much data. Yeah? So you observe something, for example, you observe the movement of a stock every day. Uh, even a stock is not continuously traded. There are small uh, time, time steps. Yeah? And um, often it is sufficient to use a piecewise constant function for the coefficients mu and sigma. And then you are in the situation that you maybe can calculate the exact solutions yeah, for piecewise constants functions. So that as a first remark, yeah, it's a very simple scheme. Yeah, maybe the most simplest one, uh, but it's uh, often it is uh, sufficient. Okay, so um, next step is I like to improve this scheme a little bit. And my next improvement is focusing here on this part. Okay, so recall the Black-Scholz model. 
the Black Schultz model had DS equals RS DT plus sigma S DW. So actually this coefficient here was just the function sigma, a constant, say sigma star, yeah, to not confuse it now with this coefficient, sigma star S DW. So sigma of T and S was sigma star times S. So there was an S here in front. And if you do an Euler discretization of the Black Scholes model in this form, you immediately see that there is an issue. So the next scheme is the Milstein scheme. And to motivate, let me write down this issue. Assume we just have the stochastic process, which corresponds to the Black Scholes model diffusion part. So let's have just dx is sigma x dw. Okay, so this is a martingale. Yeah, you, you know this, the expectation uh, of the x of t's will always stay the same. Yeah? So here, recall black Schultz model. The black Schultz model, we had ds is rs dt plus sigma s tw and well in order to maybe uh, not confuse this sigma with here the sigma which is on this slide let's call this now sigma star okay also here let's call it sigma star so sigma star is a constant and i just like to look at uh, this part here Okay, just like to look at this part. So the diffusion part. So assume R is equal to zero. So this means my coefficient sigma of T and X is sigma star multiplied with X. We know the exact solution because we can use Ito's lemma. Yeah? So if you use Ito's lemma, you know that you can transform the variable to log x. And if you look at the logarithm of x, so the d of the logarithm of x, so logarithm is uh, differentiated is uh, x prime divided by x. So you see that the division of x will remove this x here. So the d of the logarithm of x gives you a sigma star dw. And I'm in the situation that I have a constant times dw, which I can very nicely integrate. So now you know that for stochastic processes in the Ito's lemma, there is a correction term. Okay, and this correction term here is minus one half sigma star squared dt. Okay, where does this come from? Okay, the uh, logarithm or the exponential is a convex function. Yeah, So if you take the uh, expectation of a convex function of a random variable, it will change the mean. Yeah? This is uh, uh, Jensen's inequality, maybe yeah, you can you can think of it, or put differently, yeah, if you have a nonlinear function, say x squared, and you apply it to a normal distribution, so if the normal distribution has mean zero, then x squared has mean variance. Yeah? So the variance, which appears here. Um, is the mean of the square of um, the normal distributed increment. And since I mentioned that this is a martingale, yeah, actually there has to be this uh, correction. Okay, so we can have a, another re 
cap on this, but let me just let now complete that. If you now do the integration, you can do the Euler step, yeah, because now oh, both coefficients here are constant. So the nice thing is that here now the bo both coefficient is a constant. Okay, so we can solve the integral explicitly. So we get the explicit solution for the logarithm. And after we applied the exponential, we get the value at a later point in time is the value at the previous point in time. Uh, or maybe don't write it with the ti, I write it with a, uh, with a delta t, yeah, or a dt, yeah. So after a time step delta t. So this is the next value is the previous value multiplied with exponential minus one half sigma squared delta t. Uh, I need more space. Maybe I, I move this here a little bit to the left. So I have more space. Plus sigma, and actually it's sigma star squared sigma delta w. Okay, you know the explicit explicit solution in this case. Uh, what do you see here? You know that this guy is normal distributed. Yeah. This is the exponential of a normal distribution. So normal distribution can take any value, but the exponential only takes positive values. So if x of t is uh, positive, this one will be positive too. So if we start with a positive initial value, all the values will be positive. If we write this as Euler scheme, yeah, so as Euler scheme, this is x at the next point is x at the previous point plus x of t multiplied with exponential minus one half sigma square sigma star squared delta t plus uh, sigma star delta dw yeah and you know that um, maybe I copy this uh, a little bit lower because I need another line. So, and you know then this is the exact solution. Yeah. So you know the delta x. So how does the delta x look like? So the delta x. has a minimum, which is minus the xt. Yeah. So why? Yeah, because I know that this guy here is larger than zero. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot the minus one. Minus one. Okay. So you know that, uh, sorry, the minus one is here. So this one is larger than zero. So you know that this guy here is larger than minus one. So you know the delta x is larger than minus x of t. And this one here is normal distribution distributed. This is the exponential of a normal distribution. So you know that this is a log normal distribution. So a log normal distribution looks maybe like this. So this is a log normal distribution. If you now do an Euler step, then Euler scheme would tell you x of t at the next point, so let's do here the tilde because it's the Euler approximation, is x at the previous point. So assume we start at the same point, yeah? x tilde of t is x of t because it is the initial point. Then it's plus, okay, plus 
we just take a constant here. So plus sigma star x of t delta w. So for the Euler step, you know that this here is normal distributed. So the delta x here is normal distributed. So it is an x tilde here, but given you arrived at the point uh, little t, yeah. so in front here is just a known value and the increment is just a known value multiplied with a normal distribution. So this is normal distributed. Well, if you like to be precise, you would say it's normal distributed conditional to that you arrived at the point little t. Yeah, so conditional to filtration ft, uh, sigma algebra ft. Um, but assume that little t is just the initial value, then x tilde of t is, uh, a little t is just the uh, in, uh, starting point, then uh, x tilde of little t is just the initial value. So the Euler scheme would create here a normal distribution. Yeah, so maybe I don't know where it is. Yeah, so maybe it looks like this. And it can create arbitrary values to the left. So there are negative values for the stock. Huh? So you see that this is maybe not a good discretization for the um, delta W. Yeah? So this here is uh, for the diffusion part. So this here is the delta X tilde of the Euler scheme. So how can we improve this? So an idea is maybe to perform some kind of Taylor expansion. So this is just the motivation. So let me draw this here. We do a Taylor expansion of say this part here. Okay, so I like to improve the approximation by actually improving this. So assume our model is of this form that we have some uh, X dependency in the sigma. Uh, so that would be we have actually something like this here, the exponential sigma star squared delta t plus sigma star delta w. Okay, actually minus one. Okay, and this can be approximated. So exponential of x is one plus x plus one half x squared. So the next term would be one half x squared. Yeah. So there is a minus one, so one plus x plus x squared, the one is already gone. So I have an x and an x squared. So the x is just the argument itself, sigma squared star delta t plus sigma star delta w. Okay, so the next one is plus one half the argument squared. And I just take the delta w part. So plus one half sigma star squared delta w squared. So and recall dw squared is just dt, yeah, because in infinitesimal times, uh, this just converges, it's just dt, but delta w squared, the discrete step, is not delta t. The expectation of delta w squared is delta t. 
Okay, so I would like to stop this expansion here. Actually, why? Because I would like to keep the Martingale property. So Martingale is that the expectation of the stochastic process at a future point in time corresponds to the previous point in time. So here it means that the expectation of this here is zero. Yeah? So because then I have the Martingale property. Yeah? So, and you know that Ito's lemma is exactly uh, fixing this. So this part here is the part which makes the exponential uh, Martingale. So if I like to have this property two here, the expectation should be uh, zero. Yeah. So that one here has expectation zero. That one here has expectation. Okay, expectation of delta W squared, the variance of uh, delta W, this is delta T, plus one half sigma squared, here's a minus one. So these two already cancel nicely. So this is a martingale. So I like to stop the expansion at this point. Okay, if you now add the uh, take a different color, add the X, which was in front of this. Yeah. So you see that our Delta X, so there's an X of T in front here. So you see that our Delta X now becomes plus sigma star delta w. Uh, so, sorry, sorry, uh, sigma star x of t delta w. So which is this part. Plus one half sigma star squared delta w squared minus delta t. Okay, so and this correction, so now we are in the form of the Euler scheme. Yeah, so the Euler scheme would give me here just x times sigma delta w. And this additional correction is now my Milstein correction. So now we have motivated, maybe this is just a motivation, yeah, because actually I just looked at a very special version, yeah, but actually this version here of a stochastic process is the first, um, the next order, yeah, so the first dependence on x, yeah, which is, so the first one is the constant, which is nice in the Euler scheme, and this is the next uh, order, yeah, I have a linear dependence on x, and that now we have some correction if we have such a linear dependency on x, which is um, here. Okay, and you see that the correction retains the Martingale property, yeah, because the expectation of this guy here is zero. Yeah? Okay, if you look back here to our picture, what was the problem? The problem was that actually the classical Euler scheme is generating values which are far too negative. Okay, so there is some mass here in the negative region. When actually does this happen? So if x is positive, x is positive, sigma is positive, this happens if the random number we generate here from the normal distribution is large negative. Yeah? So if we are with the random numbers to the far left, 
But then here, this correction, this, step, this time step is just a constant. This is a large negative number. The square will make it positive. We add it. So this correction will actually act whenever you have a large negative number to move the distribution, to move the value back to the positive range. So actually we can maybe expect that this correction here heals a little bit this problem. Okay, that was a motivation. The Milstein scheme is now here on this slide. Yeah? So given a stochastic process, given an E2 process, dx is mu x dt sigma of x dw. Given some time discretization, we define the Milstein scheme as the time discrete stochastic process x tilde, where x tilde at a point ti plus one is given by x tilde at the previous point in time, so ti, plus actually a classical Euler step. So this here is just an Euler step. and a correction term, which is as we have derived. Okay, it looks a little bit different. One half sigma of x, sigma prime delta w squared minus delta t. So you already saw why we have this guy here. Yeah, but why does the coefficient here look like this? Okay, let's go back to our motivation. If I would like to write this as a general stochastic process, so maybe I need, again, a bit more space here. So I move this line here a little bit up. Okay, so like this. So now let's write this here. I would like to rewrite this in terms of this sigma of t and x. And you see that this here is just sigma of t and x. Delta w. Oh, I, I also see that I forgot one x of t. Yeah? So there's one x of t here. There's an x of t in front. So I forgot one x of t here. So let's fix this too. So let's fix this too. I need a little bit more space here because there has to be one x of t. It's actually the blue x of t you have from there. One here, one there. Okay, but now you see that here you have a sigma star times x, which is the sigma function of t and x. But here I have a squared. Yeah? So actually I only have one sigma t of x of t, but I do not have the other one. But what is sigma star? Sigma star is just differentiate sigma with respect to x. So this second one, which gives me then the squared in the sigma star is just sigma prime of t and x of t. Okay, so that multiplied with delta w squared minus delta t. Okay, so you see that now in the Milstein scheme, our Milstein's correction has the coefficient one half sigma times sigma prime. That's the coefficient here, and this is the Milstein correction. Okay, the Milstein scheme. 
uh, improves. We will see it also later. I have a small quote at the end, improves this part here, the integration over the GW part. Uh, another aspect is, can we improve actually the integration here? So the next uh, scheme, which I like to discuss is the predictor corrector just for the drift. Yeah, I do a pre predictor corrector step uh, for the drift. Of course, here this uh, remark, the Milstein scheme only gives you a, an improvement if sigma actually depends on x, yeah, because here you have the derivative of sigma with respect to x. So that was the dw. Now to the um, dt part. So recall that Euler step corresponds to to integrate f of t dt, we perform the approximation f at the starting point multiplied with the time step. So that is the integration where you have a function and you take here the starting point and multiply it the height, which is f of t of this rectangle with the um, size of the time step. And so that's my integral and then I perform this step by step and calculate the sum yeah? in our recursive formula. Next point is the previous point plus the additional increment. So, and also recall the trapezoidal rule. So you know that it's easy to improve this in integral by a trapezoidal rule where you approximate the integral f of t dt by um, f at the end point plus f at the starting point and from that the average times delta ti. So f at an intermediate point in between times and that corresponds to approximate such a function f by taking the starting point and the end point. And in between these two points, I take the secant. And so I get the additional triangle here for this approximation. Can we use actually this, this way of integrating for the stochastic process? So the problem is that here we have to know the endpoint, and actually we do not know the solution of our stochastic process. We are solving an, an um, differential equation, yeah. So we do not know the endpoint. But what we can do is we can approximate the endpoint by an Euler step. So first we do an Euler step to construct x tilde t i plus one. And then we repeat the integration using a trapezoidal rule with this endpoint. So the next idea is an Euler scheme with predictor corrector step. So given a stochastic process, dx is mu of t and x dt, sigma of t and x dw, given a time discretization, we perform the following approximation. We perform an Euler step. So x at ti plus one is x at ti plus mu ti 
of x of ti delta ti, sigma of ti, x of ti, delta w ti. This is an Euler step. And this Euler step generates some value x tilde star, because it is some intermediate value, which I will just use to improve or to perform now an improvement. So this here is an Euler step. So then I use this endpoint here to perform a trapezoidal rule. Okay, so now we perform a trapezoidal rule here. So we have that the next value is the previous value plus one half. The average of mu at the starting point minus plus mu at the end point. Okay, for the diffusion, we keep uh, the Euler step. So there's actually no change here. Huh? So this numerical scheme where we calculate the next value from the previous value by performing this averaging of starting point and end point, approximating the end point with the Euler step is called the predictor corrector scheme. So now we also like to do coding. Yeah, we also like implementing this in the computer. And this mathematical formula is correct, but it is um, a bit, um, say, unhandy yeah, or, or clumsy in the implementation. Because first I have to do an Euler step, and then I have to do another step again. Uh, you can actually simplify this yeah, and just write it in a single um, expression. Okay, so this looks like this, yeah? So um, what you do is, or if you go back, yeah, you see that actually uh, you do not need to calculate this guy here again because it is already the, la the um, Euler step. So what is actually the, the difference between that one and that one? Uh, okay, so you see the difference between the corrected value and the uncorrected value is, okay, this one cancels, this one cancels. So the difference is just here, the difference in the drift. And you see I have here one half mu at the starting point, and here I have one times mu at the starting point. So I subtract one half of the starting point, and I add one half of the end point. So it's maybe a bit nicer to formulate this as uh, follows. So the predictor corrector step is take the Euler step, okay, and perform a correction. And this correction is take one half of mu evaluated at the new point, oops, minus mu evaluated at the previous point. So the old mu, which is much nicer from an implementation. Yeah, It's just that correct this by um, this mu, yeah, so this guy here is actually the only part that needs to be recalculated. Uh, because we already calculated the um, other one. So only need to calculate. this correction. So no need to do two uh, approximation step, steps. Okay, so that was um, the predictor uh, corrector scheme. Yeah, so an uh, implementation can be performed much nicer. So I would like to conclude this uh, session by actually discussing these uh, schemes. Yeah? Uh, for a very specific 
process, namely a log normal process. So actually I only discuss it here for something uh, which has a diffusion of the form sigma times x dw. The Black Scholz model is an example. The Black Scholz model is an example. Okay, so <clears throat> I like to discuss now the schemes for this stochastic process, and this the Black Scholz model uh, falls under this. This is uh, actually maybe uh, an important insight here. I already mentioned that we can use Ito's lemma to transform this process to a different coordinate system, namely the logarithm of x. So if you use Ito's lemma to transform this process to uh, log coordinates, then you have that the logarithm of x follows this stochastic process where the coefficient in front of the dw suddenly lacks this x. So if sigma is a def deterministic function, then actually this part there, sigma of t dw of t um, is a bit nicer to integrate. If for example, sigma is piecewise constant, it's even possible to construct the exact solution. So if sigma is uh, um, a constant, we can construct the exact solution. Yeah? So maybe piecewise constant, we can construct exact Euler steps. So the Euler scheme of this stochastic process looks like this. And I already mentioned that we know that x tilde is approximating x where in the first time step, if we assume that, for example, mu is zero, so we don't have, have a drift, then the first time step x of t1 is normal distributed. Yeah? So this was on my slide here, um, going back, this example here, yeah, motivating the Mills time, time correction, we know that this guy here is log normal distributed, but the Euler step generates a normal distribution. So the Euler step generates a normal distribution. I already discussed this. So that would be the Euler discretization of this numerical scheme. Next one, the Milstein's correction. Since we have a dependency on X in the diffusion, there is a Milstein correction, and it's just as we have derived it, sigma x delta w plus one half sigma squared. So the, the derivative of sigma times x is just sigma. So I just have a sigma times x, a sigma squared x uh, delta w squared. Um, Oh, actually I wrote the Milstein's cor correction uh, here in, so not, not as in the previous slide, though the Milstein's correction is that we have a change in the drift. Yeah, so the minus one half sigma squared delta T, which corrects for the Martingale property of this additional part. And you know that this here It's a large positive number if delta w is large in absolute value, but maybe negative. In which case we have the problem that the Euler scheme would generate negative values where we already know that the log normal process has only positive values if we start with a positive value. So that's the Milstein scheme. Okay, 
The next scheme I would like to discuss already brings up a very nice trick. Transform the variable to a different coordinate, for example, the logarithm, and then perform the Euler scheme in this coordinate, and then transform back. So we perform the Euler step for actually a different variable. We perform the Euler step for log x. So you know d log x is mu minus one half sigma squared dt plus sigma dw. So the Euler step for log x looks like this. The new logarithm of x is the previous logarithm of x plus mu evaluated at ti. So the mu, the drift is now mu of ti minus one half sigma squared of ti. Yeah. So because the Jesus lemma gives me this additional thing, plus sigma, but since we took the logarithm, there's no xi in front of the dw, sigma dw, sigma of ti delta w. So if sigma is a constant, actually I can calculate this part here now explicitly, and I don't even need a Milstein correction. So now transforming back, yeah, so from here to there, yeah, I just apply the exponential on both sides. Uh, a plus becomes a multiplication, and I get x tilde at ti plus one is x tilde at ti multiplied with the exponential of this stuff. Okay, so this I call the log Euler scheme. And now we have derived a new numerical scheme just using Ito's lemma and Euler scheme. Okay, if the function mu and sigma is piecewise constant on the time intervals, it's even possible to calculate the exact uh, solution. Yeah, so you see there's no tilde over these and you have a numerical scheme for the exact solution. So now the time is up and I like to finish with a small uh, code uh, experiment. Just, I don't show you lots, lots of code, I just show you the result. Actually, I created these three schemes, Euler scheme, Milstein scheme, log Euler scheme for the simple stochastic process uh, dx is sigma x dw, yeah? So these are here, the three schemes and I'm running a small test and I'm using this with different time steps. And I always generate the same value, namely the final value um, at the final time step um, Tn. And since I know the exact solution for this problem, I know that the logarithm of x is normal distributed. I can check if the mean and the variance is correct. So I have an Euler scheme. So maybe just look at this line here. So this is the Euler scheme. The new value is the previous value plus previous value times mu dt, previous value times diffusion. Diffusion is sigma normal distributed random variable. Okay, I have a Milstein scheme, which is here. So Milstein scheme does exact, exactly the same, plus here this Milstein correction. Okay, one half x sigma squared multiplied with delta w squared minus delta t. And I have a log Euler scheme with the exponential function, which performs the numerical scheme using this scheme, which we get if we use Euler scheme for the logarithm. New value is previous value times exponential, mu minus one half sigma squared dt from the Ito's lemma plus diffusion. Diffusion is sigma delta w. And now let's run this for, um, different time steps. Okay, so I use here 10,000, one, two, three, 100,000 passes. Uh, 
And I use different time steps. One time step, just from the beginning to the end, uh, 11, 21, so I increase always by 10 time steps. And I calculate the mean and the variance of the terminal distribution of log s. I know that log s should be normal distributed. And since I know the analytic one, I calculate the error and I plot the error here. Okay, so this is the error of the numerical scheme generating the final value and the analytic solution for the mean and for the variance. And I increase the number of time steps. First observation for Euler scheme, if you take too few time steps, you have not a number. For Milstein scheme, this happens too. If you take more time steps, this effect is going away. For exponential Euler, everything looks nice. So if we take a look at these uh, values, allow me to add maybe, maybe one more minute to make a few comments here. Why do we get this not a number? So we calculate the log of S of T and this is not a number if S of T has on a single Monte Carlo path, you know, we calculate the mean on a single Monte Carlo path has a negative value. for some omega. Okay, so actually here in the Euler step, I create not a number because the Euler step adds a normal distributed random variable and there was one random number that was too large negative. So it generated a negative S Taking the logarithm gives me not a number. Actually, you see that Mills time scheme fixes this if the time step is small enough. So if delta t is small. But even if you just have a big time step, uh, the problem can happen with Milstein scheme. Yeah? So Milstein correction is just not accurate enough and still a negative value can occur. So now about the convergence rate. What do you see about the convergence rate? Convergence rate, so for say 100 time steps around here, I see something like a five for the mean and a 18, 19 for the variance. For 200 time steps, I see something like 2.5 or 2, or here I see like an 8 or 10. So it looks as if the convergence rate is 1 divided by n. When you double the number of time steps, the error is half. So this looks like O of 1 divided by n. You can also observe this for other values. Yeah? So for example, 150 gives you something like three here or, or 13 or 14 here. And the 300 then gives you here a seven or eight here and 1.4, huh? something like this. But then how about the convergence? It looks as if it gets stuck. Yeah. So it does not improve anymore a little bit here. And also, what is going on here? It looks as if we have no convergence. And also for the exponential Euler, which is the best scheme, it looks as if we have no convergence. Yeah, so we see here the error is small already in the beginning. Yeah, and here in the end, the error is even, even higher. Huh? Or here you have the same situation, here and here. So anybody has an idea what's happening here? 
this is just the Monte Carlo error. Okay, so I use here 100,000 passes and this is, we are at, at the end of the convergence with the time steps and there is still a Monte Carlo error uh, left. Yeah? So this is the uh, Monte Carlo error. Okay, so let's write this here. This is the Monte Carlo error. So you cannot get better with more time steps unless you increase the number of passes. And you see that the exponential Euler is already with the single time step correct because actually it's the exact solution. Uh, I used the very simple process. So for this, this exponential Euler scheme is the uh, 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 exact uh, solution. <laughs>